Hey everybody, Sevil here, and today we're going to be going over the Anonymous Room and Try Hack Me. Uh, this is not the hacking group, it makes it very clear there as you can see at the top. And uh, this is a pretty easy box, it's rated uh, with a difficulty, uh, uh, the difficulty is rated at a medium. I would I would uh, beg to differ there, I think it's uh, I think it's true to its word in the, uh, in the task description here where it says this is a virtual machine meant for beginners. I believe if you're, you know, you have a pretty good... Uh, reconnaissance or information gathering steps that you'll find this machine is pretty simple uh, it just qu requires a little bit of uh, thinking there at the foothold but once you get past that it's uh, you know it's 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 pretty simple it's it's pretty textbook so uh, with that being said I do appreciate you watching this video today I apologize for my recent absence obviously uh, there has been a uh, great deal of uh, tragedy uh, going on across the world and I just wanted to take a step back and just um, you know take a little break and um, you know just assess everything that was going on and stuff like that so um, today's a little better I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get through this walkthrough here with you all today I hope you appreciate it I hope uh, somebody learned something and uh, I appreciate you again for watching this so uh, without wasting any more time and ranting on, I'm going to go ahead and read this description to task one, our only task that we have to do today, and we'll go ahead and start answering these questions. So, try to get the two flags, root the machine, and prove your understanding of the fundamentals. This is a virtual machine meant for beginners. Acquiring both flags will require some basic knowledge of Linux and privilege escalation methods. So, knowing that, uh, like I said, it's a pretty easy box if you know you have some good recon, some good info gathering then you will find this machine to be a breeze. So let's go ahead and hop into question number one. Enumerate the machine and how many ports are open. So I'm gonna run my default here, which is gonna be uh, nmap sc for default scripts, sv for enumerate all versions, and then I'm gonna output that to a nmap directory and call it openports.txt, and then I would supply the uh, IP address 130.50. And I have already ran that, so we can just go ahead and cat that information out. So. Let's see here, and we find that there are four ports open. We have uh, FTP on uh, port 21, SSH on port 22, and we have uh, SMB on 139.445. So that answers our question number one, which is uh, four ports are open. So that's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, question number two is just kind of um, going through the output from MMAP, and it says what service is running on port 21. Well, we know that to be the FTP, which also has uh, FT, uh, anonymous FTP login allowed. So that's going to be um, a pretty interesting uh, piece of this box as well. Question number three is what service is running on ports 139 and 445? Looking back at our output from Nmap, we know that to be S uh, SMB. So that is also pretty straightforward. Those first three are pretty simple. Uh, number four, we start to dig a little bit more deeper into the box and that says uh, there's a share on this user's computer. What is it called? Well, what we can do is uh, run something like SMB client and we can supply dash n to tell it not to ask for a password and then list the share name. So let's go ahead and give it the IP address 130.50. And this should output all the share names that are available to us uh, anonymously. And we see that the, the one that piques a little bit of interest is the PIX. Uh, the print and IPC shares are pretty common on SMB. So those, um, you're, you'll find those pretty much anywhere and everywhere. But PIX obviously isn't a standard uh, share name on uh, SMB, so that is definitely going to be um, our answer, not only for number four, but also an answer to where should we go from here. Um, and that would be, I would probably go into the PIX share and see if there's anything interesting there. Uh, number five is actually user.txt, and then from here, uh, we just get user and get root. So now we just need to root the entire machine. So it kind of set us up for success here, and now we just need to go and finish the job. So let's go ahead and actually um, enumerate this, this PIX share real quick. We can do that by just bringing back our uh, last command, uh, adding PIX to the end, and actually removing the list flag here. Uh, because we don't need to list it anymore, we actually want to go into it, but we still don't have a password, so we need the dash in there. And with that going, we should be able to jump into the share now and we can list the contents and find just two picture files of uh, uh, Corgo2 and Puppo. So we can actually get those two, uh, these two picture files and bring them back to our host machine if we want to see if they have uh, any hidden information in them, uh, some stego if you would. So we can uh, get Corgo2.jpg and then we can get Puppo's2.jpg. 
And with that done, we could exit now. We'll clear that out. And we see that we have the two picture files now. And you could go through and uh, use something like strings to list out and see if you can find any important information maybe. Um, I will tell you that I this is what I did uh, at the beginning just to see if I found maybe like a password. I know we have SSH uh, or maybe um, to authenticate with an actual user via FTP instead of anonymous. And um, I will tell you that you will, well, not that you will not find anything, but I did not find anything of useful information that would help me uh, continue on with this box. So uh, that being fruitless, I will go ahead and remove the puppos and Corgo 2. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those two picture files because like I said, I didn't find any information out of that. And so I don't think, I think that's just kind of a, a little rabbit hole for us. However, uh, knowing that, we still have FTP and the anonymous logon enabled, so we can go ahead and go and FTP over to that uh, server there. We'll just 1010 130 50. We have to supply the anonymous name, and then we could just hit enter for the password, and we are now in. We can list what's on the FTP server. We find a scripts directory. We can change directories into that, and list the contents of the directory, and find three files that we can just go ahead and push over to our uh, our host machine and. Do a little bit more information. Uh, do a little bit more digging on that. So let's go ahead and get the uh, sh file. This clean.sh. We'll get that. We will get the removed files.log. So we'll get this log file as well, and we'll get the txt file also. And with that done, we can go ahead and exit. We can clear and see that we have now all those files here on our host machine. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a directory called files. Then I'm going to move all those things that we just got off the FTP server into this directory called files so that we just kind of keep the uh, the parent directory of this machine just nice and clean and tidy. So we will move all that over. And now, as you can see, we have uh, pushed all of those, uh, those FTP files that we just found into that directory. So let's go ahead and change over into files and let's, uh, let's cut out the to do. Uh, text file and we see that it says I really need to disable the anonymous logon. It's really not safe and they are not wrong about that. So um, that doesn't seem to be uh, you know too much uh, too much of anything revealing for us. Uh, we just know that uh, they need to turn off something that we are now exploiting. So uh, they weren't wrong. So now we can cat the remove to files log and we see that uh, it's just output from what looks like to be the clean.sh file. It says running cleanup script, nothing to delete. So let's cat out the clean.sh and we see that it is actually, uh, you know, that is the output that we found in the .log file. As you can see, it's outputting this information. Um, it's it's uh, temp files equal zero. It's gonna echo the temp files. If it's uh, if temp files is actual equal to equal to zero, then it will say what we found in the .log file. Otherwise, it will just remove, it looks like, those things. And um, does it put it in the same place? Oh, it just, yeah, pretty much remove files. And it just, I guess it tells us the line that it removed. All right. So, well, we know that this is actually running and uh, it's outputting to the FTP server as well. And um, we're, we just got that log file. So we know that this is, this, uh, this dot S this clean.sh file, I'm sorry, I got a little tongue tied there. This clean.sh file is actually running, uh, probably automated via a cron job since this is Linux. So what we could do is we could exploit this by um, overriding the clean.sh file because uh, we should have uh, read write permissions and we can actually put in a reverse shell so that we can get a reverse shell via netcat. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and edit this file. And what you could do is you could just edit and um, simply just add, add a line, add your reverse shell here. But what I'm going to do just for, you know, just because why, why not? I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything up into the uh, shebang bin bash. And then what we'll do is get a uh, reverse shell. Specifically, we are going to get the bash reverse shell. And we can go to pen test monkey and the reverse. Oh, I should have just went to that one right under there. We'll get the uh, reverse shell cheat sheets and we'll get the bash reverse shell. We'll go ahead and copy that 
and paste that into our queen.sh script here. And we're going to change this information, obviously, to fit that of our own, which is 10A13197. And then I'm going to go to 9001. You can go ahead and save that information. I can clear out, cat it out again, and we see that uh, it has saved successfully, and that is all the information we need. Now what we need to do is overwrite the clean.sh file that we have, um, or, or that the FTP server uh, actually houses right now with what we have now, so that the cron job runs and we can get a, uh, a shell on the machine. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a netcat listener on 9001, because that is the port that it'll be uh, reaching out to and now we can go to FTP and I forgot that IP address 13050 okay so 1010 13050 and of course anonymous because we don't have credentials and we can just hit enter for password we can change directory into the scripts and if you want to check you can see that we do have read write and executable writes to uh, the clean.sh file so now what we can do is we can actually just do put clean.sh and you can see it's successful you could list the documents again and see that we actually just changed that file. So we should get a reverse shell here shortly. Uh, it should only take about a minute and uh, we'll come right back when it has completed. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see, we are now, uh, we have now got a reverse shell onto the box as a nameless one. So um, from here, uh, what we could do is we, you could spawn a, a TTY shell if you needed to uh, by just doing the Python dash C. You, you know the command. I know I, you're, you're, you, you are all very smart people. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting a little tongue tied. It's only been a minute and I stepped away to go get something to drink real quick. So uh, let me get back into the groove here. We can print the working directory. We find that we are in the home directory for nameless one. So that should find our user.txt. And as you can see, it does output that information. And we can confirm that by just looking at the output here. And we see that that is in fact the user flag. And our last and final answer is the root.txt. So um, you could do a few things. You could look around the box. You could see if anything's running as root. Um, you can um, you can check uh, pseudo permissions. And oh, uh, as you can see, that we are not in a TTY, uh, no TTY present, so uh, that's not going to work. But I do know that that uh, is, is fruitless. There, uh, you could check your ID. See that there's nothing crazy there. Um, what else could you do? You could do uname-a, and you could look up this uh, the Apache version here. And I'm actually kind of curious um, if you go to let's see if we do this and exploit. There are some exploits here, um, some Linux uh, kernel exploits for potentially this version of a. Uh, on this machine, I don't know. I, I should probably, I should have actually checked that before. I'm not gonna, uh, you know, dabble too deep into that, but very interesting there. Maybe somebody in the comments has, you know, went that route and they could, you know, ping me about that. That would be interesting. Uh, nonetheless, uh, you could do that. Uh, you could actually just go to uh, Got Milk's uh, Linux, basic Linux privilege escalation sheet and just kind of really just go through that. So if you went to something like a uh, Linux privilege escalation, and we'll actually preface with basic. And you can see that this is just a sheet of things that you can try for, um, you know, seeing how you could get Privesk on a Linux machine. This is a really good, um, really good sheet here. I'll actually probably link it in this, in this description and probably go and update all the other ones because I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before over and over again. And I actually use it, uh, myself as well because why not this is this is wonderful information this is this is great thing, uh, great stuff here and you're not going to remember it at all and um you know he obviously got milk isn't either and you know they uh they were kind enough to set this up for us and what what better way uh to appreciate him uh or her i i i'm pretty sure it's him i apologize if not um than to use it so you know get to using it so I'll link this in the description below if you want to check this out. But you could run through this, uh, or what you could do is you could actually get LinPs on the machine and run that and have it do a lot of that work for you. Uh, in order to do that, what we could do is we can get a Python server running and transfer that uh, transfer that LinPs file over to the anonymous machine and get it going. So let's go ahead and go into the linpeas directory here, which is right there for us. And now I will go ahead and get a Python server running 
on port 80, of course. And I'll supply this username, uh, password for sudo. And we have it going. So now what we can do is we can jump over to our uh, reverse shell once more and we can do something like wget. Uh, it's almost similar to the Windows machines. Instead of, uh, you know, having to do the whole PowerShell, uh, you know, at the beginning, we just simply just run wget http um, our IP address, which is not that, 10.8.13.197. And uh, I'm just going to specify port 80 and then I want to get lin keys.sh. And I'll close that out, and that should go ahead and download linpeas. We can list and see that it is definitely there. I can see that we don't have executable rights, so what I'll do is just change that. linpeas.sh. And before I go any further, I'm just going to go ahead and spawn this real quick. Uh, let's see. Import pty. Uh, pty pty spawn. And then bin bat, uh, bin sh. Let me actually. There we go. And I believe that is correct. Perfect. So now we have executable rights to linp. So we can go ahead and run linp sh. And that should, uh, you know, that's going to do a lot of the basic reconnaissance uh, on the machine now that we're on the machine for us. So, you know, we did the recon to get here, and now Linpeas is going to do the recon uh, on the machine to, you know, allow us to further see what what else is going on. We can just kind of go through the uh, through the information as it's uh, loading up here, and maybe even come across what we're what we're uh, looking for actually. So you can see it's some services. It is showing the cron jobs. We can see that the cron job for clean.sh was actually in there. It is running um, that. Let's see. Some uh, processes running uh, through root. Nothing, nothing too crazy there. Let's see services, some outdated uh, search for outdated versions of any of these services, system timers. We get some network information. Some active ports. Obviously, we did that with Nmap, so we know we know some active ports that are on this machine. We get some user information. Um, obviously, we get some uh, UIDs, some user IDs. We get uh, we see that we're we're logged in. Uh, dun, dun, dun. And it should be just about finished now. So if we go through here, we. Uh, eventually get to interesting files. Once you go through all this output, or if you wait for it to go through and you start at the top, you're eventually going to get to interesting files. And this is where it gets tricky. Um, and it actually got a little tricky for me. So from here, uh, we see all these all these interesting files, and yet this one, the uh, environment um, and user bin uh, environment, we see that this is actually highlighted here. So potentially, uh, we're going to have our exploit is going to be right in here. Now, honestly, I learned something from this machine because I didn't know what I needed to do uh, with this, and I'm actually upset with myself that I didn't. Nonetheless, um, I found out what I needed to do by doing um, GTFO. I eventually had to find this uh, through a lot of Google searching and found this on GTFO bins, and it was uh, a command in order to break me out of... Um, Basically, it, it didn't break me out of my shell. What it did was it escalated my privileges using a uh, EUID, which is actually an effective user ID. And it was really interesting because I had never done it before, and I didn't know that's what I needed to do. And I don't think any of this works. What you actually have to do is this command right here will actually um, escalate our uh, privileges working as a sewage backdoor. And it's really cool, actually. Uh, for it to be so simple, it's actually really, really cool, at least to me. So what we would need to do is actually run, um, we would need to run user bin uh, env, and then we can just literally just put this last portion here, bin sh dash p, uh, and it tells you it omit the dash p argument on systems like uh, Debian that allow the default sh shell to run with sued privileges. Um, so now we just run bin sh dash p, once we do that, we can now do ID, 
and we see that we have an effective user ID of zero, which is root. And we know that to be the case. I mean, you know, you should know that already with Linux. If not, you could go look at the user information and look at root's ID and see that it is in fact zero. So now we have an effective user ID of zero, which means that we can, you know, potentially do anything that root can do. And you're not exactly root, you just have the, uh, the right, oh wait, that's different. Last time it didn't even let me be root, that's weird. Okay, well, we are root. So we can uh, cat root dot root dot txt. And as you can see, that has catted the information there and we are root. Um, that's, that's odd, last time it just gave me the effective uh, ID um, and then Anytime I put who am I, it just said I was still the nameless one. But now it's saying root. No, no worries. It, uh, you know, made me into a liar. I apologize. Nonetheless, we are now, uh, we have full, full access to this machine. It has been rooted. We can go ahead and confirm that by going over to try hack me and seeing that the final answer is in fact uh, matching up with what we have catted out here uh, from the root directory. So that is finished. I certainly appreciate you all. Thank you for watching. This is, in fact, the end of the video. Uh, for those who are still watching, I would like to ask that, uh, uh, you know, just with the recent events, if uh, maybe we could just take uh, a few seconds here. I'm going to start my start my clock here in just a moment for about 10 seconds. If you don't mind, just maybe just having a little moment of peace uh, for, you know, all the things that we're going through and just uh, kind of reflect on what we do have and, and just kind of cherish that. So I'm going to go ahead and start the clock for uh, 10 seconds here. All right, and that is uh, that was a quick 10 seconds. Uh, like I said, I appreciate it. I hope everyone is safe. Um, I hope everyone is uh, doing well, and uh, I will see you on the next video. Thank you again for watching. You all have a wonderful day.